Hello everyone. Welcome to David Griffith's Electrodynamics, problem 2.24. Finishing up on the last section of this, uh, some of these potential problems we're doing. Um, and then we're going to be learning about Laplace's equation and stuff like that. And find better ways to find the potential. But for now, we are stuck with our um, formula that requires us to have the knowledge of the electric field already. Which is not very useful because the point is... The, the potential is generally use, uh, easier to find than the electric field, but if you have to find the electric field first just to get the, uh, to get the potential, then that's not very useful. But um, regardless, it, it does help you with some calculations and kind of teach you some of the concepts. All right, so this problem states that this is the charge configuration we had in problem 2.16. I have already solved this problem. Um, I have the electric fields written for each of the regions, so we have uh, outer cylinder and inner cylinder. The inner cylinder has a uniform volume charge density and the outer, outer cylinder surface has a uniform surface charge density. And these two charge densities cancel each other out such that if you're outside of the whole configuration looking at it, it looks electrically neutral. And that's why the electric field outside of the cylinder is zero. So we just have electric fields in the region between the cylinders and in the region inside of the inner, inner cylinder. And we want to find the potential difference between a point on the outer cylinder and the center here on the axis. So we want to find what the potential difference is. What is the difference in potential? So that would mean something like this. So the difference in potential would be like the potential at, a, at, at B, at a point on B, at a distance B, minus this, minus the potential at the center. And you know, we can use our equation that we've been using to find um, potentials this whole time. And I'm going to start at the center and I'm going to work my way out. So this is going to be equal to minus the integral. So I'm going to start at zero and I'm going to go to A first because we're in two, we have two separate regions to consider. But yeah, I'll write it like this. So we're going to go from the center to B of E dot DL. That's, that's the problem. And to do this, we have to cross two different regions of two different electric fields. So this integral is going to be split up into two separate integrals, kind of like our last problem was. So this is going to be minus the integral from the center to A. And then we use the first... Uh, equation so e dot dl in this case becomes this ds and then minus the integral from a to b of the second equation so rho a squared over 2 epsilon naught s ds and this is going to be how we find the potential so Let's do this first integral. So this first integral is, so we have the minus sign, we have rho, I'm gonna pull out everything, all the constants. And then, so we're just gonna have SDS, the integral of SDS, um, which becomes S squared over two. So we have S squared over two, sorry about that. Can you guys see? Yep. And this is going to be evaluated from 0 to A. I'll do that in a second. Then we have minus, we have rho, A squared is constant, 2 epsilon naught is constant. Then we have the integral of 1 over SDS. Well, that's just going to be the natural log of B over A, these bounds. So I already evaluated these bounds. And we just have to evaluate this section here. Let me do this on a new page. On the back here. Um, well, I want to be able to see it. I don't want to keep flipping over, so I'll just start on a new page. There we go. So we have minus rho over 2 epsilon naught. Then s squared over 2. Evaluate at this bound. It'll be a squared over 2 minus zero over two. So we the second bound is zero. So we just have a squared over two. 
I can combine those. Um, and then we have the minus row a squared over two epsilon naught, the natural log of b over a. And let's see. So I could factor out rho a squared over two epsilon naught. That would leave a, a, a one half here. So we're, this is gonna be equal to, and let's factor out, do we wanna factor out the minus sign or not? Yeah, let's just factor out the minus sign. So we have a minus sign rho a squared over two epsilon naught. So we factor that out and that leaves us with a positive one half here for this first term and then plus the natural log of b over a. And I like that form. I don't think that's a bad form. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the potential difference. Um, and yeah, that's all we had to do. I don't think it requests us to do anything else. Um, just double check. No, it does not. That's all we needed to do. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about this problem, um, feel free to let me know. I hope this was helpful and this was short and sweet. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.